Hey, welcome back! We are it. Oh, 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 let's go upstairs. <laughs> All right, we went upstairs. We're in Tina's house. The Russell estate, I think. And now we're gonna go talk to Professor Russell, who's not down here. He is up here, probably. I'm home, Grandpa. Ugh. Okay, maybe this way. Ah! 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 <laughs> uh, uh, so this is Professor. Nice to, um, meet you. My name is Estelle Bright of the Racer Guild. We actually came to get your expert opinion on... Mm -hmm. Um... Got it! Uh... <laughs> I did it! It's finally complete! That's right. Who's the man? I'm the man! Yes, I should start testing it at once! Ah! What, what, what the hell? Uh, I'm sorry, still. Grandpa kind of goes into a trance when he's working. And he doesn't really notice what's going on around him. I think he, uh, he just finished up the device he's been working on for the past few days. Ah, I see. He really is something. Oh, he's something, all right. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, Professor Russell? Grandpa! There are some people here who need to talk to you. Hmm? Oh, Tina! You've come at just the right time! I need your help with compiling the data from these tests. Um, but Grandpa... This new invention will actually block a biosensor orbit's detection faculties. It emits a unique orbital force field that deflects the energy that a biosensor sends out when it scans. Oh, really? Yes, really. Since when do I overstate my own accomplishments? Now, come on. We've got this thing to do. Right. Professor Russell and Tina began working with some complex looking equipment. Hey now. Never mind, Estelle. I think we should just let them be for a little while. Hey! You with the black hair! Uh, who? Me? Who else? On the upstairs bookcase is a notebook titled Orbital Energy as Applied to Force Fields. Go get it! Go on! Be quick about it! Uh, alright! Wait, Joshua! Hey, young lady! You with the antenna hair! A antenna? Oh no, you didn't! Quit farting around and make some coffee! Why should I have to make you coffee? I take it black. By the way, I want to clear her as mud. You're not hearing a word I say. Uh, fine, whatever. Yep, perfect. I'll set, Grandpa. Just as fast as ever. Uh, oh. Um, where are still in Joshua? Who? Come to think of it, I do vaguely recall a couple of young folk. Murdoch sent the sent along some fresh faces then, I presume. G Grandpa. And so Estelle Joshua inadvertently wound up as assistants in the experiment. After many small but relatively harmless explosions, <laughs> relatively harmless in quotes. <laughs> uh, relatively harmless in parentheses, actually. I mean, explosions and some uh, singeing of the eyebrows. The day gave way to evening. <laughs> Sorry about all that. I just assumed you were both new employees at the Central Factory. So it's only natural that you wound up being drafted as assistants. Uh, this is so... this is no laughing matter. Especially since the only thing you had me helping with was making coffee. Girls could bang metal parts together too, old man. Relax, Estelle. We got some valuable experience out of the deal in the end. 
How often does one get to participate in startup tests on a brand new type of orbit after all? Well now, wait, wait, there we go. Well now, you're a bright lad then, aren't you? Want to give up this bracer nonsense and start up in the field of orbital engineering? Grandpa! I'm really sorry, guys. I guess I got caught up in the moment, too. You don't need to apologize, sweetie. But I thought the father of the orbital revolution was going to be some really amazing man. Not some old fart with attention def uh, def uh, eh, attention deficit issues. <laughs> Please, you're too kind. Moving on. So I'm being uh, paid a visit by the children of Cassius. That's quite the surprise. So you really do know our dad? Yes, from way back when. I've known him since his army days some 20 years ago. I've met him too. He had the really nice mustache, right? Well, I don't know if I'd call it nice so much as suspicious looking. But if he's known, uh, but if he's known dad for that long, it looks like we'll be safe and trusting you know what with Professor Russell after all. Yes, I have to agree. Hmm? What are you talking about? And what was it you wanted to help with? Well, so I'll explain to the professor the whole sequence of events surrounding the Black Orbit. I see. Wow, a pitch black orbit. Yes, most intriguing. And with no inscribed caliber or uh, it's that or seems. Look at that frame, though. Professor Russell produced a cutting tool from his belt. Without a word, he pushed the blade edge against the outer shell of the orbit. Wait, what are you doing? It's a special alloy steel cutter. Hmm. Just as I thought. Here, take a look. Uh, okay. Estelle, Joshua, and Tita peered intently at the black orbit. Huh? There's not even a scratch. Hmm. The frame is made from some type of metal that I've never before encountered. Opening it up for a closer look is going to be quite the task, I think. The, that's just crazy. If we can't find some way to open it, we'll be right back to square one. Well, I can certainly spend some time on trying. But first, I think that maybe we should put it under a measurement scan. What now? That huge piece of equipment you saw when we were working on the experiment. It can gauge orbital energy activity in real time. You're making my head hurt with your techno babble. Just tell me what you're using that thing will accomplish. To put it in layman's terms, it'll allow us to see just what this orbit does. We won't be able to draw any a definitive conclusion just from measuring what kind of orbital activity is occurring, but it's a start. And that should give us a major clue. Indeed. So without further ado, Grandpa, shouldn't we have lunch first? Uh, sure. Estelle and Joshua, you're both welcome to join us? I can't promise it'll be anything special, but sounds great to me. We'll even help with, gr uh, with prep. All right, come on then. I've got a bit to do while lunch is prepared. No, when is he at two? No fair working when I'm not around. My house, my rules. What is up with these two? Now I see where she gets it. Ahem. Now, if everyone is ready, let's get this started. Estelle, if you'll put the ornament on the stand. Okay. Uh, like this? Yes, thank you. Are you ready, Tita? All set. Good, good. Now, commencing orbital force uh, measurement test on the Black Orbit. Black Orbit. So that's going to be the official name after all. But using it officially is so boring and simple. Why not something cool like Dark Thingy of Impending Doom? N no, no. Simple is best. Anything longer than Black Orbit would just be annoying to say. Uh, fidget, fidget. Ah, look at her. She's all anxious to start. Huh? 
Oh! <laughs> Alright, let's begin. Tita, if you'll activate the scanner, please. Okay. Output set at 45. Put all measuring equipment on standby. Roger. Done. All measuring equipment is calibrated. Okay. From here on out is a real deal. Since no direct input or output was defect uh, was detected, all we could do is measure how the central crystal circuit responds. Now, let's see just how much this op uh, contraption is really worth. You're sure in a good mood. And click. Neat. It's not glowing and stuff. I get it. It's putting a major strain on the crystal circuit. There, there. Tita, any readings? Y yes, but they're kind of weird. Hmm. The technometer, uh, tachometer, tachometer needles shaking like crazy. Ah, N now it's spinning around the dial. What? Eh. What's going on, Joshua? It's that same black light from before. What? Shut down all the orbital technology in the city. Grandpa! It won't take much more of this! We have to shut it down! Don't you dare! Just a little longer. It will have something. Wait a second! All the lights in town are going out! Huh? What? What in? Bah! We have no choice then. Terminating the experiment! Oh. They're back on. Phew. Let's see the readout. Nothing. Didn't record anything. And the only thing that kept working was the scanner on which the black orbit sat. But even that, well, as for everything else. Good. It looks like the experiment's finished. How's it outside? Fine. All the lights are back, like nothing happened. There's still a lot of people panicking, though. Okay. But, just what the hell was all that? That... was what I would dub the horrible shutdown phenomenon. The... what now? You mean how everything inside, all the orbments, just stopped working at once? So, the Black Orbit did this. Yes, I have no doubt. But I would never have dared to guess that its effect would be so extensive. Hmm. There's definitely more to this than I expected. Interesting! But it's interesting indeed! Only you would think causing a blackout over an entire city is interesting. Professor! Ah, Murdoch. Just the man I wanted to see. The feeling is not mutual. Every single time you invent something, it means trouble for me. What the hell were you up to that... Wait, were you up to that would cause all the power in the town to go out? How rude. It's not even my fault this time. See that? There? That's the Black Orbit. And it caused this. Is that so? The the Is that the... V you know what? I didn't read that, so we're going to move on. Okay, I get it. If that's the root of this, then it's uh, genuine extenuation. Uh, ex wait, extenuating circumstances. But it's sti it still means that this was your fault. Ugh, nuts. You got me. That's it? You're just okay again? Are they always like this? This is so embarrassing. 
And so the first day its eyes kept everyone busy. Due to how late it was, Estelle Joshua stayed at the lab for the night. Da, 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 da. And then I woke up with experiments being performed on them. <laughs> oh god, it's foggy all of a sudden. Man, yesterday was such a crazy day. I was surprised enough at the town, but I really wasn't expecting to deal with anything like that. <laughs> no kidding. But back on the subject of the Black Orbment. It's much more powerful than I'd ever imagined possible. Da. Da, 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 da. Moving the microphone to be more comfortable for me so I could sit like this. Da da. Yeah. What's the professor going to do now that his equipment's gone all. Kerfluck! Oh, all kerfluey! <laughs> Good morning, guys! Morning, Tita! Good morning. Quite a big day yesterday. <laughs> no kidding! Did you guys sleep okay? Yep, like babies. Is the professor already up? Oh, he left for the central factory early this morning. He said something about how he was going to expose all the Black Orman secrets. Wow. Looks like getting roared o w wait, roared at over the and over by the factory chief yesterday didn't even put a dent in him. We really appreciate both of you taking the time just to look over something a couple of relative strangers brought you. Oh, it's fine, really. Grandpa's investigating it out of pure curiosity more than anything. It should go to the factory itself, or I should go to the factory itself, or myself, once I'm done with breakfast. What do you plan to do? Naturally, we'll be coming with you. I want to know what's really going on with that ornament, too. Maybe there's something we can do to help. Yay! Then you can come with me! Uh-oh. I almost forgot about the soup. Just a second, you two. I'll bring you breakfast as soon as I make sure it's edible and not on fire. I guess that's what that smell is, but man, what a cutie. I wish he could take her back with, or we could take her back with us to Roland. She could be like a pet, cheering us up whenever we're feeling down. That's kind of creepy as still. And now that we've had a good breakfast, off to the central factory. Before we do that, I'd like to check in on the, at the guild. I think it might be best to report on what happened yesterday just to be on the safe side. Well, okay. Hey, Tita, would you mind if we stopped by there on our way? Sure, go ahead. <gasps> to the guild? We're doing that now. Going this way. The guild. Hello. Nothing to report. I already did that. Alright, cool. I want to mess with this. Oh, I already did that? Fine. I'm going to talk to you then. Good morning. That was some day yesterday, wasn't it? When you are ready, we'd like your full report on it. Business as usual, Kilka. I've heard the basics from the factory chief already. But I'd like to expand that account with some first-hand details. Well... Joshua explained the details of the Orbital Blackout. I see. So the ornament that was sent to Caseus in secret was in fact something dangerous. The guild is very interested in these developments. We need to continue working with Professor Russell for the uh, present. We thought you'd say that. When we have more information, we'll contact you immediately. Right, can I mess with this? No? It's all, it all says the same thing. I want more quests! <laughs> I want more things to do! <laughs> Team Russell away! <laughs> Tia, everyone, how are you? Professor Russell is in the workshop on the third floor. He seemed pretty impatient, like he was waiting on something for someone. So I guess we're going to the third floor. To the workshop. Side room. Workshop! 
Da, 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 da. Bah, humbug. Another failure. Grandpa, we came to see if we could help. Ah, hello, Tita. And you too are here as well, I see. <laughs> what can I say? We were worried. So, what are you working on? Well, as you can see, I've tried to cut into the black ornament, but it hasn't been going very well. What seems to be the problem? Perhaps a demonstration is in order? And click. Whoa, what's that thing? It's a circular saw. It's made of a special alloy that can cut through basically anything. That ought to do it then. Uh, it stopped. I thought that might happen. It's on a smaller scale, but it's the same phenomenon as yesterday. It seems like the black ornament is blocking the functionality of the other ornaments interfering with them in some way. And I doubt it was solely made for the purpose of killing the lights. Yeah. But Grandpa, doesn't the effect spread like it did last night? Yes, good thinking. The interference with nearby orbments seems to spread out, moving from orbment to orbment like chain lightning. I'd put the range at about 5 arch. But if there are no orbments powered on within the range, well then that's where the effect stops. I see. That makes sense. However, even with the knowledge, there's no way to know why it caused machines to simply stop without getting a look inside it. It's very troubling. Is there any way to destroy that thing? Maybe with a good scream and a really hard whack? Don't be ridiculous. Uh, didn't you see the big saw do exactly nothing to it just a moment ago? Well, yeah. And with off trying fire, maybe it would melt down in a blast furnace or something. If we did that, the insides of it would melt too. Oh yeah, well it was worth a shot. Hmm. Actually, it might work. Really? You know of a way to burn it open? No, that's not what I meant. Orbital power, that which drives or mints to work, can be used for this problem. We'll have to find a way to that doesn't rely on any orbital energy. Hmm. So thwack it. Is there even such a thing? The combustion engine. It's a device that burns fuel to generate energy. The idea has been around for a long time, but it's very inefficient when compared to orbital energy. However, all you need to work the work on them are standard tools. Huh. Neat. I get it. Fire is the key. But Grandpa, I've never even seen one of them. I'm pretty sure that there's one under study in the Central Factory Workshop. Oh, you'll need to get fuel as well. Like oil or something. No, it's called gasoline. It's extremely flammable. There is likely a tank or canister of it stored in reserve. Hmm. Yes, it should do the job. I'll start getting the tools ready. I'll help. Is there anything we can do? I mean, I can't do anything super technical like Tia can. Well, you could go and get the engine and gasoline. It's going to be heavy, but you bracers should be strong enough to move it. Okay, leave to us. So, where would we find these? Hmm, let's see. Don't tell me that you've forgotten. I've forgotten. He just said not to say that. Uh, um, Estelle? If you look in the operations room, you could probably find them. What the heck is an operations room? It's a room with a bunch of horrible computers that's on the fifth floor. We store all kinds of information there for safekeeping. Wow, I didn't even know there was such a place. Then I should, uh, then I leave it in your capable hands. Ah, <sighs> making coffee, fetching stuff. Well played, old man. Well played. Oh well, let's go find this operation room thingy. To the fifth floor then. <gasps> We're going to the fifth floor! The fifth floor for the floor! Eh. It's on the fifth floor. And the operations room is that way. Wow, check out this place. 
This has to be the operations room. Hey, you two. I haven't seen you before, so you mind telling me what business you have here? My name's Travis, senior engineer and supervisor. Nice to meet you. We're with the Bracer Guild. We're here at the request of Professor Russell, so if... Professor Russell? <laughs> He's not in trouble again, is he? Again? You really don't have much faith in him, do you? No, I mean, I realize that he's a genius. He was the one who developed the, uh, capital units, after all. But even being acquainted with him results in no end of trouble. Tito, on the other hand, is an incredibly sweet girl. Just an all-around good kid. <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. But I don't think we have time to stand around talking about talking in this case. We need to find where the central factory stores its equipment. Oh, is that what this is all about? In that case, go right ahead. I'll show you how it works. This cylindrical device is a type of computer. It's called the Capel. These days, they mostly get used to assist in airship navigation. But this one is equipped for the fastest general purpose data processing in the world. It can be used for anything from calculating material density to information retrieval. Now, for the information retrieval. You have to use this front panel to select that mode. That will send the signal through the wiring and allow you to access the memory ornament. There are there's a quartz inside that trains a rapid light pulse on it, you see. Then, it simply extracts the data you want. So I trust you know how, to, how it works now? Sweet. Yep, no sweat. I'm impressed, Estelle. You're way better with modern technology than I am. Okay, so I lied. All that stuff went completely over my head. Well, there's the setup. The change, uh, to change the mode with this panel. I'm sure you'll figure it out in no time. Well, I'll figure it out next time. Not exactly in no time. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you want to support, please subscribe. Press that bell because that's the only way you're going to see more videos from me. Uh, well, that's the only way you're going to see the period of your subscription fee is what I meant to say. Like, share, favorite, all those things because that helps out the channel tremendously. Next time, I'm going to mess with this computer, figure out what to do next. Look at all these. Look at all this stuff. There's so much stuff. Oh, I can't move. Oh, no. You won't let me past. All right, well, fuck. Anyways, <gasps> bye!